How is everybody doing today? I'm assuming we'll be live shortly. It usually takes about a thousand frames or so on XSplit to go live. Hello everybody, how are we doing today? What's up, Zudna, Raja, or real hypester? Rejuvenation, Sidoris. Greetings, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. I'm excited for this episode. First thing is let me wash my hands. Always gotta wash your hands. Alright, so we're gonna be doing French onion soup today. Um, there's many different variations of the soup. You can add several different herbs, sachet bags, different kinds of wine, so on and so forth. We're just going to be covering the basics of it today. Uh, once again, I like it pretty simple, but please, if you want to make it yourself, go look up some recipes. We're going to cover the most important part, which is caramelizing the onions. Uh, caramelization is really important. You always hear me talk about getting a good sear on stuff and uh, all that stuff and trying to get color on everything and the reason you want to get color on stuff is flavor uh, basically when you burn the outside of something uh, you you caramelize the natural sugars of it uh, onions obviously are not naturally sweet but they do have natural sugars in them which uh, is where you're gonna get all your flavor from so French onion soup is quite simply caramelized onions with stock and spices and uh, sometimes some wine and some sherry and stuff like that so uh, we're gonna go over the basics Let's just get to chopping onions and I'll talk about it. The recipe I'm going to use is pretty much from memory. Uh, we're just going to be using half beef stock and half chicken stock. Well, let's steal this up. Some tears will be shed. I'm, I can already tell that it, that onion is nuclear. But I hope everyone's having a great day. I'm going to play more scrolls tonight. And then, of course, tomorrow we have <laughs> our first Dota night. I'm going to keep that experience completely pure for you guys. I haven't even... I've loaded up the game to make sure it works, and that's as far as I've gotten. Oh, yes, much better. Hoping this is not too much onion. The thing with caramelizing onions is they literally they whittle down to nothing, just like mushrooms. You can have an entire mounding pot full, and then they just turn into next to nothing. That's kind of a weird onion. Okay, the trick with caramelizing onions, you have to cook them for a very long time. But the the real trick is um, to Start them on a like medium low heat and get them sweating. Uh, sweating means they start glistening uh, in the pot, and then turning your heat up so they start caramelizing. If you start with a really hot pan, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to burn, which is not a bad flavor, but it's not what you want for French onion soup. One of the reasons I like French onion soup, it's not my favorite flavor combination in the world, but it's one of those, it's a perfect example of how using a simple technique can pull out a bunch of flavor, which is what I'm all about personally. Alright. These are some ridiculously strong onions. You can see the, the onion milk on the cutting board that usually equals uh, an incredibly strong onion. Did I get that? Not quite. So this is how I like to peel my onions. It's just quicker this way. You do have a little more waste because you sometimes pull off an extra layer doing it this way. but. Uh, uh, the the French way to do it is to cut.
cut off the top and then you take a paring knife and you peel down the skin peel down the skin like this towards the root and it takes forever and you end up crying a lot so I just try to get it done as quickly as possible uh, frankly onions are really cheap to get so so another good thing about French onion soup it's incredibly cheap to make it's really just onions and some spices Welcome to Dapper Cantate. Thank you very much. I can't see my chat very well today. In fact, we'll go zoom in the font here in just a moment. Uh, not quite. So all we're going to do for these is julienne them. So basically we're just going to take the onion and then cut it along the bias like this. Nice and easy. It's also good practice. No, it's not a true julienne at all, but that's what you say when you julienne an onion, because you're never going to get a perfect stick out of an onion, uh, which is what a julienne would be. little matchstick. Oh, here come the tears. It's only I knew it was only a matter of time. The sooner I get this done, the less I have to cry. Of course, most of my kitchen cuts have actually been <laughs> trying to cut too fast cutting onions, so we'll actually we'll slow it down a little bit. The best thing you can do to not get yourself to cry as much on onions is use a very sharp knife. Um, if you use a dull knife to cut onions, what happens is when you cut into the onion, it causes all the juice in the onion to spray. Uh, and that creates mist, which creates gas, which uh, ends up making you cry. Alright, so how I do it when I julienne an onion is I cut about halfway and then roll it over and then you have another flat piece. If you try to do it all the way the other way, you don't end up with a flat surface and when stuff rolls around, that's when you cut yourself. Now you want slightly thicker pieces for this, like something like, something like that's just about right. Oh, there we go. Once again, they are going to cook down to nothing. If you cut them too thinly, they basically disintegrate, so you need a little bit of uh, substance to them. Oh yeah, here comes the pain. We're escaping it. Okay, I'm probably going to start bawling at the, on the last onion. Nope, not quite. Here it comes. Another tip, if you're going to cut a lot of stuff and you're right-handed, put everything you want to cut on the left, because everything you cut, it ends up on the right side of the knife. So you have less work to do. If you start put everything on the right and then cut it, you have to cross over and then push everything. Everything would end up here, then you have to cross over and push it back. Oh man, here we go. It's been a rough day. So this looks like a ton of onions, and it kind of is, but it is going to cook down to next to nothing. Uh, one job I worked out, I made French onion soup from scratch all the time, but you'd have to fill up just this giant tub full of onions to cook a whole batch, and then it cooked down to not all that much. Okay. Okay. 
Try to break them up a little bit. You don't want the huge pieces. Granted, they're all going to cook down eventually anyways, but that's okay. We also cooked it in this giant tilt skillet or brazier. Uh, I would I would love to own one of those, though I don't know what I'd use it for, but it's good for just about everything. Okay, one thing you do want to do when you caramelize onions is you want to salt them. Uh, what the salt does is when they start cooking, it starts pulling the moisture out of the onions. The sooner the moisture gets out of the onions, the better off you're going to be um, for caramelizing. That is six onions, and we'll find out how many people we're serving for soon enough. I honestly don't know. It's not something I cook very regularly, but it's something I do enjoy. Okay. So we're just going to add a little bit of salt, maybe like a teaspoon, not that much, and then just stir it in the best we can. Alright, so here comes the part that takes a while. So there's a metric metric ton of onions, but you'll see see what it cooks down to. Not very much. Right on prostasis, well, if you can nail the caramelizing of the onions, you're you're there. That's all you need. And then you can just take whatever recipe you want and try out different uh, styles of spices and seasonings. They're all pretty simple. Uh, usually some thyme or a sachet of black peppercorn, sherry, red wine. Uh, there's many different variations, different ratios of stock, uh, all sorts of stuff. Okay, here's a, here's a little pro tip for you guys. I have these lovely uh, French onion cups. Now, if you don't have a French onion cup, you can just use your regular old coffee mug. Because what you do with French onion is you melt cheese on top of it. So if you don't have uh, fancy soup bowls that are good for melting cheese, you can just use a coffee cup. This takes time and patience, that's right. Another thing you can do, which I'm going to do since I have so many onions, is I'm just going to add a little splash of water to the, the bottom of the pan. Uh, we're talking like a tablespoon here. That should keep them from blackening while they start cooking. I have too much stuff in the pot to properly caramelize, so I need to get them cooking down first. Right now we're on a medium heat. We're going to go up to high heat later, but right now we want to get the onions to sweat. Onions go from being raw to sweating. They're kind of glistening. Um, what's the difference between brown, red, and white onions? Uh, just the flavor, really. Uh, red onions tend to be more pungent and acidic. Uh, I'm also going to add just a smidge, just a smidge of oil. Not very much. We'll stir that all up. It's like another teaspoon and a half or so. I just wings. I never really follow recipes, to be perfectly honest. I highly encourage people to look at recipes. Just remember that a recipe is only a guide. It's like it's like directions to somewhere. It's not gonna it's not gonna tell you everything you need to know. It's just the basic guideline. It doesn't tell you uh, it doesn't tell you what the speed limits are on the roads on your way to get there and all that kind of stuff. A recipe is simply just a reference point for you to use what you know to make the best food possible. All right. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah, so we're like on a medium medium-ish heat. You can add sugar to speed up the caramelization process, though I find our, I find caramelized onions to already be very sweet. So I don't like to speed up the process. However, if you're going to do something like roast a piece of broccoli, you can add a little bit of sugar to them, like a little bit, and it'll help brown them and caramelize it. Uh, but I find, I find onions themselves to be very sweet, caramelized onions, so I don't, um, I don't add any sugar. Yeah, onions are going to be sweet enough. Mmm, food. Well, I would say if you're short on time, if you're short on time, you should not be caramelizing onions. So I'll just leave it at that. 
it's one of those things like you don't you don't just cook risotto fast. You gotta you gotta take your time and do it right. So we're gonna be stirring more often while we're trying to cook them down just to get them sweating. You can already see they're getting a little more shiny. Is French onion soup good cold? It's not my favorite. Though it's very easy to heat up. You've already pretty much destroyed the onions in the French onion soup. And by destroyed, I mean you've cooked them down to nothing. So reheating them back up is not going to, um, not going to do them any harm. Caramelized onions are really good on almost everything you can put them on. Steak, pork, chicken. You can add them to sauces. They make, hell, they just make a good side and put them on um, bratwurst, everything. They're good. All food will keep for approximately six days. If cooled properly, will be safe to eat for about six days. Okay, well, classic French onion soup. We'd put a, we'd take this. And we put a like a crouton or a piece of a piece of toasted bread on there, cover it with cheese, and then go from there. Um, you don't have to put cheese on your French onion soup. It's just the way it's normally done. I am not a fan of the crouton myself. I have something greatly against the texture of soggy bread. So we're going to use two kinds of cheese here. We're going to use Gruyere and uh, Parmesan. can also use Swiss or, well, really whatever you want. Cooking is not a hard and fast set thing. There's very few things you have to do it that way. In fact, you never have to do it that way. There's just ways that some people accept that are better than others most of the time. Uh, some, some flavor combinations just go well together. There's nothing wrong with experimenting. In fact, most of the time if you experiment, you're not going to make something that tastes bad. Uh, you'll learn something. See, it's already starting to cook down a little bit. Gruyere is just like a fancy Swiss kind of, it's a drier one. That's right, Dick Cheetos, what a name. Welcome to Dapper, sir. Thank you, new subscribers. I'm sorry if I don't uh, respond to everybody's questions uh, right now. The uh, purpose of this is not so much for me to talk to you guys. That's what my normal gaming cast is for. I just want to talk about food. Then look at my gaming site. That hype. Actually, no, Metal Man. You'll watch how much this cooks down to. It's going to be next to nothing. But it is more onion flavor than soup. What you're really doing is you're caramelizing to the bottom of the pan and then scraping that stuff off. So caramelized onions are nice and brown. Uh, the more caramelization you get, you're basically making a, a little reduced flavor packet for adding your stock and other things. This is six onions. I don't know, Space Ghost. I don't, I'm not very good with ratios. I'm sure you can look up a recipe for French onion soup if you want to know ratios and stuff like that. I'm just cooking six onions down, and we'll see where it takes us. Yeah, honestly, miso soup is very um, easy to make. Honestly, I escaped crying over the onions. I'm, I'm excited about that. We escaped. We escaped bawling. I sniffled for a second, but there was no actual. Um, There's no actual cry about it. All right, we're getting there. It's already cooking down. Some of the onions are starting to turn a little more uh, opaque, which is exactly what you want. We're starting to get the water out of the onion, which means it's going to become much harder to burn them. In fact, about two more minutes, and then we're going to crank the heat up and really start cooking them down. Uh, once again, we added them to the pot, and then we put them on like a medium-ish heat just to get the, the cooking process started. Uh, if you throw regular onions into a very hot pan, they blacken. You don't want blackening, you want browning. 
Uh, granted, the black color is not bad, especially on um, the bottom of the pan. You're going to end up scraping all that stuff off, and that's where your flavor comes from. <laughs> Onions, please. That's right. You don't want to lose all the cooking. Almost. Now we'll stir less often when we turn the heat up, so we want to get that nice browning. If you stir constantly, you're never going to get uh, you're never going to get proper browning. You can already see the pan's gone down because everything's softened up. There's less air in between the onions now. Which is good. I think we actually got just about the right amount. If you cook too much stuff in the pot, it's pretty hard to caramelize it, but I think we'll be alright. Just trying to break up all the bigger portions. Alright. Turn it up a little bit. Wash my hands again so I just touch my face. That nice, nice sizzle in the paint. Dota 2 is tomorrow, Hilo. I, I prefer uh, global knives. I've always used global knives uh, ever since I was in culinary school, and they've always treated me very well. Always kept their edge for a long time. Uh, I like the balance on them, so I use globals. Yes, Dota 2 is tomorrow. Um, I'm excited for that. Let me just say, let me just say this: not everybody's going to get to play tomorrow. We've had near 400 signups for Dota 2, so uh, we'll see what happens uh, after the next week. After uh, after this week, I will send out another thing where people that miss the sign up or uh, had problems signing up can sign up for Dota 2. The number one thing you can do to save your knife is invest a couple bucks into a steel. They're not expensive, usually $15 or so, and learn how to steal, steal your knife. That will keep the edge on any knife that you buy, even if it's a piece of crap, uh, for like twice as long at least. There we go. Now we're cooking. Alright, now we're going to let some of the water cook off. Just going to let it sit there for a while. Now our onions are they're in stage two. They're turning opaque. Which means they're starting to get slightly translucent so you can see through them. Which is good. Now we're cooking with mayonnaise. Yeah, honestly that the the saying that a sharp knife is a safe knife does not seem uh does not seem logical but it's true the vast majority of cuts comes from your knife slipping and that only happens with a dull knife because if you're trying to cut through something and you press really hard and it slips off the edge that's when you cut yourself uh, a good cook usually cuts themselves because they're going super fast and they don't have their hands put properly and they leave their thumb out for a second and then you cut into yourself but uh the sharper your knife is the easier it is to cut things the safer it is I have a little bit of everything, creamsicle. In fact, I'm going to switch away from the spoon to a spatula of some sort, I think, or a wooden spoon so I can scrape the um, scrape the bottom of the pot. You want to get something you can scrape the uh, scrape the pot with. It doesn't have to be... Oh, uh, where is it? I know I got one. I'm actually going to use this right here. Uh, anything with a flat beveled edge so you can actually scrape the bottom of the pan what you want you what you want is all that stuff you're cooking onto the bottom of the pan all that flavor what of the day for the beast german thank you
But yeah, I'm really excited for Dota tomorrow. It should be a good time. Uh, I don't have too much to talk about here. I mean, really, we're waiting. We're waiting for the onions to cook. You can already see it's reduced down by about half. Just using a, uh, let's see, I had red wine in my fridge because I used it for something else. Mmm, it's not good. Reindeer Ranch California Red Table Wine. Whenever you're cooking, I don't find the wine you use to be very important. In fact, we're not going to use very much. I have never enjoyed drinking wine myself very much, but I like cooking with it because it has a lot of flavor. Okay, there we go. We're starting to cook a lot of the moisture off. And now we wait. You can, Cheeky Monkey, but be beware if you use uh, oxygenated wine that it's going to have a bit of a sour taste to it. There are games after cooking every single week. I'm guaranteed to be live from midnight to 2. It is currently 10.28. You know what? I don't mind reducing so much. Of course, if you're working in a kitchen, you have six other projects working while you're, while you're reducing your onions. But for this occasion, it's important to demonstrate. Uh, important to demonstrate this, I think. I actually, I have not done anything. Uh, yes, white onions. Uh, I have not done anything with uh, Dota other than make sure it works. I want that experience to be 100% pure uh, for the stream. Meaning, I don't know anything. Yes, I am beef. Yes, you can use boxed wine. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The quality of the wine is not all that important. <laughs> What's up, bro? Not really, Dooney. A couple games here and there, but nothing enough to be good. Alright, we're getting there. They're starting to stick to the bottom, which is great. We're cooking French onion soup today, Future Side Will, as the title says. Alright, I'm going to turn it down just a smidgen. You want them to brown, but not get adhered fully to the bottom of the pan. I hate squirrels for taking up all my Dota time. That game is so addicting. Hit update twice. All I can say, guys, is there was a mass amount of signups. Some people had too common of a name to invite. Some people had incorrect information. There will be more invites going out after uh, tomorrow. We're going to be using a half and half chicken and beef stock. That's how I like to do mine. Every week I eat right before this so I don't get hungry. Every week I end up snacking anyways. Alright, we're almost there. Uh, basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is cook off most of the moisture so we can get the caramelization process started. You're not going to get caramelization if your onions are wet. They are no longer wet. We will receive caramelization soon enough. What ingredients are there in all? Okay, we have six white onions. 
salt, a little bit of oil, uh, chicken stock, beef stock, Gruyere cheese, Parmesan cheese, say red wine, and that's really it. I highly encourage you guys to look up French onion soup recipes. There's many different ones out of there. Yeah, well, once you once you cook them down to be caramelized, um, they don't really taste like onions anymore. They kind of taste like sweet, I guess. Yes, it will work with any kind of large pot, uh, steam. You just want to make sure you don't fill it up too much. Uh, yeah, the surface area is important for caramelizing onions because if there's not enough surface area, it's impossible to caramelize fully. So you can't just fill up a, just a pot full of onions. Or you can, it'll take a really long time. Little bit of salt, little bit of oil. Just let them cook, 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 cook. That's it. A little peek. There we go. We're starting to get there. Good. I like onions in all forms. I have no idea how many of this recipe serves. I'm not following a recipe. We'll find out shortly. I'm going to guess four to five servings. I chose Dota instead of League of Legends because I don't like watching League of Legends. I like watching Dota. I prefer oil myself, Kissinator, uh, unless you have clarified butter laying around, which most people don't. I think oil's the much safer option. Not very much. Uh, yeah, you would normally do it with butter, but but okay, there we go. We're starting to get a little bit of. A little bit of cooking. And you see stuff starting to cook onto the bottom of the pan, or maybe you can't. I don't know. That's good. That's exactly what you want. We're going to basically caramelize all that stuff to the bottom of the pan and end up with caramelized onions. You know, you see there's a little bit of browning happening. That's exactly what we want. All this stuff is sticking to the spatula that we just scraped off the bottom. That is where all the flavor comes from. That's where flavor is made. Right on, Hypester. Thanks for taking the time. Um, actually, I didn't cry. I sniffled once. I sniffled once. I cut, I cut onions in a manly manner. Um, cream ziggle, I don't really agree with that. Uh, different di different oils have different smoking temperatures, breaking temperatures. Olive oil is lower on the scale. It's around 425 degrees. Uh, things like grapeseed oil, peanut oil, coconut oil all have a smoking or breaking temperature of around 500. Canola oil is around 450. So, uh... I mean, honestly, unless you're cooking something at, at uh, egregiously high heat for whatever reason, really don't have to worry about it. I think the main reason you use olive oil is for flavor. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to scrape the stuff off the bottom of the pan the best that I can uh, as it cooks down. If it gets stuck on there and there's a bunch of black stuff on the bottom of the pan, not a big deal. These are slowly going to cook down and become much more brown. Uh, I can leave much longer than that. You have to let them sit for them to caramelize. If you just keep stirring them and stirring them, they'll just kind of disintegrate. Yeah, I did have a pretty bad cut. You can see a picture of it on my Twitter. There is not a single cook out there. I don't care how good you are, how fast you are, how long you've been using a knife. It is immune to cutting yourself.
It is flavor. Um, it is flavor. It's exactly what the black stuff, all the brown stuff that cooks to the bottom of the pan. That's what deglazing is for. That's why you add liquid to deglaze a pan is to get all that flavor you cooked in. Chewing, chewing gum may work for cutting like six onions, but let me tell you if you have to cut 22 pounds of onions, nothing is saving your eyes. For a beginner, yes, I would recommend the 8-inch version. Definitely lay. Uh, I'm using the, the larger version right now, but the 8-inch version is great for a newer cook. You have a lot more control over the knife. You don't want to buy a super big chef knife unless you've used the knife quite a bit and you understand how to hold it and uh, uh, how to work with it. Just another second. You can see all this stuff on the spatula. That's our flavor. That's where it's at. We're going to try to get as much of that back into the pan as we can. Right on, Lay. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for that. Good knife is the, the best thing you can invest in, in my opinion. Uh, one good knife is probably better than any other tool, pot, or pan you can have in the kitchen. Just because of what you can do with it, which is everything. This might be a slightly longer cooking with frag, but uh, the caramelization process takes time, and I want to demonstrate that. We're doing something so simple that the execution of the caramelized onions is the most important part. Afraid you cannot ship food, Burke. That is against the law. Oh yeah, mandolins are incredibly dangerous tools. Um, I see more people cut themselves on mandolins than anything. Uh, one slip and you basically shave a piece of your finger off. Incredibly dangerous. I have not, here's, here's a funny story, mandolins, uh, actually I think I have one somewhere, let's not put half and half into the soup. <sighs> I may have some, with anyways, what a mandolin is, is probably seen them, it's just like a sheet with a uh, blade on it so you can slice stuff super thinly. Now, every mandolin comes with a guard on it so you can use it. I have not worked in a single kitchen that's had a mandolin, which is all of them that had the guard available for them, so you're just sitting there doing it with your hand. I have never worked in a single kitchen that had a guard on the mandolin. That was almost as ashes. I do stuff like that all the time. Pour stuff in the wrong pot, whatever. Alright, getting that nice, delicious flavor. Starting to darken up a little bit now. Yeah, it's getting there. But remember how much we started with? It was almost to the top of the thing, and now we're like a quarter. Finger flavor. It's kind of like finger lasers. I cut myself in a kitchen trying to pull apart a plastic bag. Flavor! Oh yeah, you can smell, you can smell the sweetness now. The sugar's cooking down. Scrape all this stuff off. The best you can, anyways. Oh. 
and all this stuff is cooking off. Want to get it back into the pot. I don't know. Smell vision coming to Twitch TV soon. Yes, you could absolutely use a veggie stock. Absolutely. Absolutely. I prefer to use just white onions. I don't really prefer the sweets. It's already sweet enough. It's already sweet enough. It's a beard gross shirt, though it's terribly inaccurate. Chicken bought it for me for my birthday last year. Thank you, Maynard. Hey, Michelin stars do I have? Zero. Nice crane. It is one of those things that's kind of relaxing to make. You don't have to do a terrible amount of work. And you get to get all the smell and uh, feeling like you're doing something. That's right. I don't need no stars. I'm the Bashi. Thanks. Uh, Count 8, I very rarely cook single serving things. I am a single father who works about 60 hours a week. So the bigger portions I can cook things in, the better. So I usually cook at least enough for three or four days is my goal. There we go. We're starting to brown up a little bit. I mean, realistically, most people don't have time to cook a meal every time they want to eat. It's just not realistic for almost everybody. My daughter's three. So I have always, I have always cooked things in three to four day batches. It just saves time. I mean, if you can cook something for one serving, it's not going to take you much more time to cook five servings. It's just a bigger amount. Thank you, Crane. It's almost Father's Day. Another hour and 15 minutes. That yeah, Minnesota. No, I'm sorry, Nolan. It's not finished yet. I don't, I don't get tattoos to show them off. I've been working on my sleeve for two and a half months now. It's about 70 to 75% finished. When it's done, I'll take pictures, but I'm not like going to show you each time I get something done. Well, thank you very much, Crane. I appreciate it. Ha! <laughs> nice, LPD. I don't want that kind of responsibility. I don't want to be the father figure to the entire group. Let's see. Scraping all the stuff you can off the bottom. And look how nice and brown we're starting to get. That is amazing. It is 100% a cooking sleeve, Maynard. It's all food. <laughs> nice control play. That's uh, Your wife sounds like a funny gal. Absolutely, Nolan. I'm a bit of a junkie myself. Dim tattoos. But yeah, once the sleeve is 100% finished, I will absolutely take pictures of it and do all that stuff. But uh, until then, it's mine. Are you going to get your other arm tatted too? Uh, to be perfectly honest, um, 
Tattoos are very expensive, so probably not until after the challenge is over would I get another sleeve, or if I wanted to. Although, if you have one sleeve, what's the harm of getting two, right? I think you're almost kind of committed at that point. Now, the more moisture that cooks out of these, uh, the easier it becomes to caramelize. So the more frequently you'll kind of stir them, scrape the stuff off. But we're going to start letting them cook down real good now so we can get that flavor bomb. They're about halfway there in color. We're well over halfway in cooking time because there's not enough moisture. I saved up for a very long time to get this tattoo and worked very hard to be in a position to do. I don't want to throw I don't want to throw that much money at it right now. So uh That's cool Nolan. My ac my artist actually just did a 50s pinup on somebody. It was really nice. I use the uh Joytech Ego T type B if I just Yes, more scrolls tonight and Dota tomorrow. Dota tomorrow. Ha <laughs> Kale. Uh. Yeah, uh, apparently I had my bank call me when I made the purchase of shards on scrolls because they're like, we don't know who scrolls.com is. I'm like, why didn't they just, why didn't they just make it mojang.com as the billing? This, uh, streaming is 100% my job right now. I gave up my job to try to stream for a living when the challenge started making no money and now I can say that streaming is my full-time job and happily so but I took my savings to do the challenge and we're now at a point where I can stream full-time so thank you all for being an awesome part of the community and making that happen alright almost there I was a cook. I worked in uh, kitchens for approximately eight years. The better part of seven, anyways. You'd be surprised, Barga. I'm going to have a good time tomorrow, whether you guys want me to or not. They would still be delicious. We're just not going to have the level of flavor that I want. Uh, EP Diablo... There have been 400 signups plus for the Dota, so I'm sure there will be side games going, there will be a main game going. We're just going to go with the flow. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. We'll find ways to improve the system as the weeks go by. So I have no idea how it's going to work. In fact, it'll probably be a clusterfuck. We'll just throw that out there. But we'll have a good time. Indeed, Dave's Chizo it is a good word. All right. Oh yeah, give me that. Give me the goods. Now we're cooking with mayonnaise. All right. Now we're starting to get that nice brown color. I'm still not perfectly satisfied with it, but uh, we're definitely getting there, and once we deglaze all this, it's going to be a flavor bomb, because there's a whole bunch of stuff cooked to the bottom of the pan that I can't even scrape off with the spatula now, which is good. That's where all our flavor is. How hot is this pan? It's on pretty high, like medium high. Medium high. 
Yes, them pan scrapings. So good. So to caramelize the onions, we started on a medium low till they started sweating a little bit. And we turned it up to medium, made sure they uh, turned translucent. Then we turned it up to medium high. All right, onions, I want you to cook now. We're just not quite there. I really, anytime you're caramelizing anything, searing anything, I work for a chef and he was very correct. He says, anytime you think you're done searing or uh, c caramelizing onions or doing anything with caramelization, when you think you're done, wait two more minutes. But damn, those are tasty. Think you're done? You're not. You can see how much this cooked down into. It's next to nothing. That's great. That smell is so good. That uh that mm 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 all that stuff burning onto the pan. That is the goods right there. Like when you, when I did this in kitchens and you had just a giant tilting brazier, it's just a giant square you can cook stuff in. You take the metal spat and you scrape it along the bottom and it's just this sheet of like cooked black goodness. That's, that's all the stuff you're scraping off the pan is that stuff. Horror's on a mini vacation right now. Yeah, that's right. The tasty yum yums. We're almost done. I think I'm going to give it till we'll just cook them till the top of the hour. It's another six minutes, and then I'll we'll add everything else and uh, call it good. <laughs> no, it's a fake vacation. He told me that it was a fake vacation. Not a real vacation. He has to do work stuff. So all this stuff's going to get taken off the bottom of the pan when we deglaze. Which is the whole purpose of deglazing. Is to get all that stuff that we took all this time to cook onto the bottom of the pan and get it, uh, get it into, the, into the soup. This is really easy and cheap to make. Deglazing, okay, we take all this time to cook the stuff on the bottom of the pan, so we're going to take and we're going to add liquid to our pot, and then we're going to scrape all the stuff off the bottom. That is deglazing the pan. You're taking all the stuff that you cooked into the pan off the pan, because that's a majority of your flavor. Yeah, that's fine, Justice Fries. You just don't want to use a ton, because if you do that, uh, you're going to have a bitter flavor. Um, wine you wouldn't drink anymore. It's not sour, it's different, but uh, like if it's slightly sour, it's going to impart flavor to the food. Caramelization is simply the process of bringing out the natural sugars of anything. Anytime you brown something, you're caramelizing it. Like if you roast, uh, say you roast some asparagus on a really high heat, if it browns, you've caramelized it. You roast broccoli, you've caramelized it. You sear something in a pan, you've caramelized it. That's it. literally what you've missed is me cutting onions and then cooking down the onions. We started on a very low heat until the onions were translucent. Then we um, turn it up to a uh, medium high heat and then let's let them cook down, scraping the bottom of the pan. Yes, anything you add to the food is going to add flavor to the food. So you don't want to use rotten wine. Maybe slightly past prime, sure. No, I have not added the wine yet. We're going to do that next and then add the stock.
The wine goes in first. That's what we're going to deglaze with. Uh, the reason it goes in first is I don't want to. You don't want to add just raw wine to something uh, when there's already liquid in it. And the reason for that being is it's going to taste like alcohol. Uh, the purpose of deglazing with wine or anything else is to cook off the alcohol, so you're just left with the the true flavors of it, rather than that uh, that bitter alcohol flavor. Oh man, that is so close, so close. And we have a whole bunch of stuff on the bottom of the pan. In fact, this will be uh, much darker if I just added a little bit of water and deglazed. We're gonna do it with wine instead. Yeah, it's a great call, Drone Throne. Anything you wouldn't drink, probably don't want to use it, though there are exceptions. Honestly, Mugen, when cooking with wine, I really don't care about the quality of the wine. Because once again, you're cooking off all the alcohol. <laughs> sure, you can use super expensive wine when cooking, but you're basically wasting it. Really? I have to bite this. All right, two minutes, two minutes. See, I thought I was done there, but we're going to wait two more minutes instead. Now we have some nice browned onions, nice and delish. Depends on what you're cooking, Mugen. Like, if you're going to do something with fish, you're more than likely going to use a white wine. If you're going to do something with beef, you're more than likely going to use a red wine. That's right, we're going to browning these onions. Cooking time with me. There is barely anything there compared to what we put in. You're absolutely right, because that's all the moisture cooked out. That's what we're left with. We started, you can actually see the line on the side of the pan. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like it's like right here on the pot. And you can just see it slowly cook down. No, I've never brewed my own beer. I don't really have any desire to. I'm not much of a drinker. In fact, I don't drink for the entirety of this two years. There's plenty of great beers out there without me brewing myself. Though, it is a fun project, I suppose. So much stuff. Like this right here. That, that is exactly the stuff that you want. Mmm. All right, let's do this. I'm not going to add very much, just a little bit. This will not even be the full deglazing process, but it's a start. Let's scrape it really good. I just want to make sure that wine cooks out, then we're going to add our stock. It already has cooked off. <laughs> I'm not rich, thank you very much. I live with my parents for the duration of this challenge. Honestly, I would never own a house this large. I could live in a one-bedroom apartment and be happy. I am not a uh, not a person that likes lots of things. In fact, I'll probably live here for another year. The reason for that being, in order to buy a house or put a down payment on a house or whatever you want to do, you have to have uh, a full two years of documented income. Which means that this year, the first year I've actually made any money live streaming, doesn't mean shit towards buying a house or uh, getting a loan for anything. It means absolutely nothing. Okay, so we just added our chicken stock, and this is where we're going to pull all that stuff off the pan if we can. I do prefer a very simple existence. If you go in my room and you look right now, I have a bedside table, a bed, and clothes in my closet. That is the extent of my belongings, and I like it that way. 
Okay, so we're going to get some of the liquid on the side. We're going to try to scrape all this stuff off. All this stuff off. Doesn't that look amazing? All right, now for the beef stock. This is what we made last week on Cooking with Frag. This is the same stock that we made uh, last week. Just going to pour it through the strainer. All right. We'll let it heat up, and then we'll taste it, and then we'll uh, season it, and then we'll melt the cheese. But that right there is the very base for French onion soup. I think just about anybody can do that. Once again, I highly encourage you to look up recipes and try out flavor combinations that work for you. I just wanted to demonstrate the basics of caramelizing onions and deglazing. And if you can do that, you can make a good French onion soup. Recommended cheese would be Gruyere and Parmesan would be the two, though you can really melt any kind of cheese you want to, uh, white cheese preferably. Gouda works as well. Uh, you can do a lot of fancy stuff. You can even use like puff pastry to bake it uh, and have it be uh, have a cap on it. So basically, the classic way is you put a like uh, sliced baguette that's toasted underneath the cheese, cheese or sorry, soup, baguette, cheese. I have I have something very much against the texture of soggy bread, so I never put the the baguette or crouton on there. Gruyere is pretty good stuff. All right. I want to wait for it to heat up before I taste it. That way I'll know how much flavor we're working with. I'm really just going to add some salt. Um, if I had some fresh thyme, I'd probably add that too. Dunk a roast beef on a toasted baguette and that. There you go. That's good. I love French dip sandwiches because you're dipping fresh bread into liquid. It doesn't become soggy. It still tastes good. I'm talking about bread that's been sitting in liquid for too long. It's gross to me. The only thing I put on the onions is a little bit of oil and salt. That's it. That's it. Wow, that's actually really good. Salt and some sherry, and I'm going to call that good. Now I want to bring it back up to a simmer at least. At the very least, you want to simmer again. I know I want some salt. Pepper, not very much. It's actually pretty salty. I like sherry a lot. You can get sherry vinegar and sherry. Just the straight sherry, I think, is where it's at. Oh, that smells so good. Mm-mm. Honestly, it's one of my favorite smells. I don't particularly like most smells, but man, sherry is some good stuff. Yeah, me too, Shadow Kid. I like I like the smell of cooking alcohol. I like the smell I like the smell of alcohol. I don't really like the taste so much. Uh, apathetic one. If you click on the cooking with frag, actually I'll post it in the chat here. I do it two months in advance. 
two months in advance. Basically, what I try to do is build, uh, when I start a season of this, this is the first season, season, we've done shows before that, start with something basic and then work our way down utilizing the, um, the skills that we learned in previous sections. I love the smell of gas. Yes, I do, combat. I actually really enjoy the smell of gasoline. Not that I sit there and huff it or anything, but I do enjoy going to the gas station. I like that smell when you step out of the car. Just a little splash of sherry. Now, we talked about the wine earlier, but we're not going to add uh, the wine later because it's going to taste like alcohol. Sherry is also alcohol, so 17.5% by volume. We don't want to add very much, otherwise it's going to have a really weird uh, alcohol taste. Though it is a very nice finishing uh, finishing flavor. Freshly cut grass, another nice smell. Yeah, pine needles are good too. Well, I can see that, Mugen. I mean, I don't get to smell it very often. Just like anything, if you smell something enough, you get tired of it real quick. Salt, salt, salt. Once again, I highly encourage you guys to look up recipes for French onion if you want to make your own. Uh, there's many different variations of spices and things that you can do to make it good. Man, that sherry really finished up nicely. We'll give it one more scrape on the sides here, make sure we're good, and then we're going to then we're going to melt some down. All right. Once again, I talked about this earlier in the show. I got these awesome French onion bowls. However, if you live by yourself and you don't have enough, the best thing you can use, coffee mug. Makes for a great French onion soup so you can melt the cheese in the oven. In fact, I'm not going to use one of these because I don't want that much soup. So we'll do it the, the way you would do it if you don't have all the right tools. Yes, you can make this a vegetable broth. If you're going to make it with vegetable broth, you're going to have to add more stuff, like some herbs or uh, a sachet of black pepper or something to spice up the stock a little bit. The stock we made uh, last week was incredibly flavorful, which is why the soup tastes good. So uh, absolutely, you can do it with vegetable stock. You're just going to have to get the flavor from somewhere. A classy coffee mug French onion soup. There you go. Don't pour the soup in your coffee, sir. We won't. Okay, it's a nice ladle. I was just thinking about that, like, I don't own any, uh, what I would consider good soup bowls. You should not feel guilty for drinking your soup from a... No, no. This is called a microplane. If you don't have one, it's a very cool thing to have. You can use it to zest stuff. You can use it to grate cheese, very fine. You can use it to do all sorts of goodies. All right, next step. You guys probably won't be able to see this, but we're going to uh, put it on broil, get that heated up, and that's how we're going to melt the cheese. Which I guess that might not be considered a microplane. It's a little bit thicker than would be considered micro. So we're putting the oven on broil and then we're going to melt the cheese under the broiler and uh, then we'll be done. And get cleaned up a little bit while we're while we're going. One more taste. 
we got there. I don't like soggy bread, Alexi, so I don't I don't use the crouton. Feel free to use a crouton if you want to. I find it to be disgusting after you start eating the soup and you just have these chunks of this gross soggy bread. Personally for me, I can't I just can't do it. I can't do it. It's one of those texture things that I can't get over. Gurrier and Parmesan. Soggy bread sounds like a punk band. I agree. Yeah, soggy bread is something I just can't do. Some people love it. See, Sidoris loves it. So, yeah, you can serve bread on the side. That's all good and well. All right. Well, my cheese is already starting to melt. So let's throw this. Uh, let's trim around the edge here. And we'll throw this on top. Oh yeah. Uh, this may not melt down exactly like I want it to, but that's okay. I should have waited to add the cheese till the very end, and that way we would have gotten the browning I wanted. Either or, it's going to be melty and gooey and delicious. I used to work with a lady that pronounced it Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese. And nobody ever corrected her. Now, another benefit of putting um, of putting the crouton below the cheese, which I'll show right here, is that it allow it, it holds the cheese up so it browns. Like my cheese right now is melting into the soup. So that's uh, one of the disadvantages. Uh, one way you can get away with that is filling it up all of the way. Now, I didn't fill my bowl up all the way, so we're going to mess up the browning portion a little bit. But it'll still be all right. In fact, my cheese disintegrated into the soup. But that's all good. I am broiling it. I'm doing a very shitty job of it. But that's all right. That's right, cooking all the Parmesan cheese every day. Yeah, we'll get a little bit of browning on there. We'll call it, we'll call it good. Let's wait for that to finish. I kind of have a salamander. God, how nice would it be to have a salamander in your own kitchen? If you guys don't know, uh, yeah, you can, you can skip out on the cheese if you want to. You don't need cheese. In fact, the soup by itself is very tasty. Um, kitchen torch is probably going to get too hot unless you're very, uh, very accurate with it. All right, well, you can see my cheese didn't broil 100% properly because I didn't have fill it up enough or have a crouton below it, but still going to be gooey, cheesy goodness. We're doing it live. Okay, a salamander is basically like, you know, the broiler on your, on your oven? You stick them in there? It's basically like a... A compact broiler with a super hot heating element on the top, so you can just throw stuff in there, and then it like melts cheese or uh, heats stuff up or does anything. It's a small, it's a small lizard, usually found in shallow water. Yeah, it's like a mini oven without a door. That's the best, uh, best. It only has one heating element on the top, so it's used for melting stuff, keeping stuff hot. Uh, use it for everything in kitchens. Like almost every kitchen has a salamander of some sort. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to go downstairs and load back up and then uh, come back up and clean up my mess. So I will be back um, Be back online in about two minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we saw my cheese melting fail. That's cool, man. It's cool. Um, 
You know, you're not going to do everything perfectly doing it live. You can watch the Food Network, and they have everything cut and laid out, and they have uh, a finished product sitting below them magically. Um, I think live streaming is pretty cool. It just goes to show, I consider myself a pretty good cook. I fucked up the cheese, and that's all right. You're not going to do everything perfectly every single time that you cook something, but you can still make good food. So be back in two minutes. Thank you, thank you. Be back soon.